police reform policy. I'm Adrian Pedersen today on Upfront. After weeks of protests, what state lawmakers are working on when it comes to policing. The Legislative Black Caucus is vehement that we want equity at all levels. We all need to come together, put together something that's going to work for all of us. And the race for a vaccine. How much pressure is there? Pressure not only to get it right, but to get it fast. Matt Smith will take us behind the scenes with Wisconsin researchers in the midst of a global competition. Plus, we'll talk to the new Milwaukee City Attorney. Are you concerned what you might find? Extremely. He's a coronavirus survivor, and he has a new vision for the office in the city. Taking on the issues important to Wisconsin, this is Upfront with your host, Adrian Pedersen. Thank you for joining us. Tomorrow marks four weeks since the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. We've seen international protests and a renewed conversation in this country about race. Friday, Juneteenth, the governor and lieutenant governor announced legislation that establishes statewide use of force standards, requires certain training, and prohibits chokeholds. And today, we're asking, where do Wisconsin lawmakers stand on police reform? So joining us first is Democratic State Representative and Chair of the Wisconsin Legislative Black Caucus, Lakeisha Myers. We really appreciate your time today. So on Juneteenth, the governor and the lieutenant governor rolled out some legislation. I know the governor talked to you about this. What can you tell us? I can tell you that these, uh, the package of bills that is uh, recommended by the governor, uh, a start is a great start. It addresses some of the things that the legislature has been concerned about and can immediately try to curb some of the disparate treatment that happens to people of color across the state. Um, when it comes to issues of no-knock warrants and ensuring that community-based organizations have real investment and are on the ground and able to do some of the work as far as diversion programs are concerned, a lot of times these programs and organizations are overlooked because they are um, working with people on the ground. You know, we want to get back to real community-based policing and having police intervene in serious matters only. And what's your hope for a timeline on this legislation, considering I know that you originally wanted the governor to call a special session on Juneteenth, and that didn't happen. So how quickly do you think this can move forward? I do think this can move forward. I think the conversations are already happening in the background with uh, parties on both sides of the aisle. I think that we will continue moving forward um, with the community organizations and making sure that we're continuing to take this message to all 72 counties and show how the economic impact of policing uh, makes its impact in every community, no matter where you live across this state. I think this is something that we all can end up agreeing on and making sure that we utilize these bills as a starting point um, because everything is not in this package of bills. There's still a lot of work to do because the Legislative Black Caucus is vehement that we want equity at all levels. Are you frustrated that you didn't go into special session to talk about this right away? You know, I am frustrated at the fact that, you know, it has taken us as a legislative body we, we didn't do enough when we were in our original session. I think we could have met for more days. I think we could have gotten bills passed that uh, lay at the feet of the Senate that did not take up many of the bills that were had bipartisan support. So there's uh, multi levels of, of frustration. I think with us being in this particular predicament and not having a special session, it is a blessing in disguise because we not only honored uh, Juneteenth, we are still doing the work in the community. We're still making sure that the voices of the people are heard. The special session didn't happen, but I would rather us not have gone into something that was forced um, or into a situation where we were not going to get all that we deserve for the people. Um, I want us to actually do the work and not just throw something together or have something thrown together and present it. I want it to be active. I want it to be real. I want it to be something that will be sustaining for the people of this state. And I wanted to ask you about two things that happened in Milwaukee, two big things when it comes to the police. So the school board in Milwaukee voted to take officers out of schools and schools events. And then the Milwaukee Common Council is looking into cutting the police budget by 10%. So I'm wondering if you support those moves. I do. Um, as a former Milwaukee Public Schools educator, I understand what it looks like 
um, for our students to be policed um, at school and then be policed in the community. And it is uh, traumatic. You know, a lot of our young people have had traumatic experiences with police by virtue of where they live. I think, you know, when you treat people a certain way, you know, that is what you expect of them. I think when you raise the bar high enough and you see and treat children like children um, and understanding that children will be children, I don't think that a child should, you know, have uh, a criminal rap sheet with a diploma when they graduate. And I what, think about, it, what about cutting the police budget? Is that something you want to look into across the state, too? Absolutely. I think Milwaukee is unique because the rules for policing are very, very different than in other municipalities. Um, I think when you look at the pension system that the police are under in the city of Milwaukee, 46 or 47 percent of the state of the city's budget should not be dedicated to one particular agency. And when you think about the lopsidedness of that, you know, we can no longer sustain that type of uh, that type of economic um of, of that economic fate. Representative, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. So we just heard from a Democrat there. Now we'll hear from a Republican. State Representative John Spiros is a Republican from Marshfield. He chairs the Assembly Committee on Criminal Justice and Public Safety. We talked to him before the governor announced his legislation. You know, considering you were a police officer at one point in the 80s, do you want to see something change in terms of state law when it comes to policing? Yeah, we've done a lot. Uh, I know that I've reached across the aisle. Those on the other side have reached across the aisle talking to me on many things. So there's been a number of bipartisan things we've already done. Back when I first started in 2013, when I was first elected, uh, Representative Bies and uh, Senator Taylor actually put together a bill that came through the Criminal Justice Committee uh, that was bipartisan, passed bipartisan. It had to do with police officer deaths. So if there was a shooting, uh, they would have to be investigated by a separate department because at that time they were investigated by their own department. So what I've seen is, you know, we've, we've been working together. Uh, I know that uh, Representative Taylor from uh, Madison, who's actually moved to going to be a circuit court, court judge pretty soon, uh, her and I have been working on a number of things. We work on those together. But uh, chairing up the Criminal Justice Committee, I hear from all different people, from law enforcement onto the different communities to the local levels, too. Does more need to be done? Does something need to change? You know, I, I would say that I'm willing to sit down and listen. Uh, I think that what we saw in Minneapolis with an officer uh, was a bad deal. Uh, he's a bad officer. He made a major mistake. Uh, it looks like he had some problems in the past, too. So I think people have to understand that does not, that's not the precedent for all officers. Uh, I know when I was a police officer, I mean, I, I went to work every day to do my best to work, work with those people who I stopped or those people I came in contact with, but I was fair. And uh, I guess, you know, if things have changed, maybe we, maybe we need to take a look at it. I would say from, from what happened in Minneapolis and how that officer was still on the street and what he did, I would definitely say that certain things need to be changed. What kind of legislation do you think, if any, we should expect from Republicans on this? How high of a priority will this be? Well, I saw President Trump put out uh, uh, what, what he thought from an executive order. Uh, I saw that, uh, you know, advocating grants, uh, banning chokeholds, uh, a database. Uh, you know, I think all those are a starter. And I think as we, we, we uh, sit down with the community leaders and we sit down with law enforcement, we need, we need, really what needs to happen is we all need to come together, put together something that's gonna work for all of us and gonna keep our community safe, gonna keep law enforcement safe, but also keep those individuals in the community safe as well. Uh, I think that's important. So I think we can do that, but as far as specifics, what needs to be changed, I mean, it's interesting because you brought up former law enforcement, but you know when I was in law enforcement, uh, I never even was taught how to do a chokehold. And I've seen that legislation has come out and people have talked about, let's stop doing the chokehold. Uh, I was never taught how to do that. So um, that was not one of my primary, you know, what, one of those primary things. So I would say that that's something that's, that we need to look at. Is that something that needs to be done? And I think the biggest thing is trust. Now, from a legislative standpoint, 
I can't pass a law on trust. Trust has to be something from the community and from law enforcement and from all of us to work together. Starting July 1st, former Wisconsin Republican Governor Tommy Thompson will be the interim president of the University of Wisconsin system. The Board of Regents president made the announcement Friday. Our editorial partner at wispolitics.com has all the details on their website. Still to come on Upfront, you want to stick around for this next interview with the Milwaukee City Attorney, why he's concerned about some police brutality cases. Taser, taser, taser!